Well, we're joined now by George Galloway, who knew Hugo Chavez very well and spent two weeks working on his campaign in Venezuela last year. He joins us from Beirut, where he's been filming a TV program, and from Washington by Republican Congressman Luke Messer, who sits on the Foreign Affairs Committee. And Congressman Messer, thank you very much for joining us. Um, Glad the to State be here. Department's just been briefing and saying that uh, America will send a delegation to the Chavez funeral. Uh, and indeed, um, President Obama was pretty conciliatory in his remarks about the death of Mr. Chavez. Are those remarks that you agree with? Well, uh, listen, no one likes to speak ill of the dead, um, but we have to recognize in this moment what Hugo Chavo, Chavez was. He was a anti-democratic despot. He left his country worse than he found it. I recognize that there were some that benefited from his leadership, but those gains were largely stolen on the backs of others in his country, and I think that's how history will remember him. Uh, George Galloway, your history will remember him in a very different way. Well, uh, a Republican congressman would say that, wouldn't he? Hugo Chavez expropriated the richest of the oligarchy. He distributed Venezuela's God-given oil wealth across the mass of the population. And that's why he kept on winning elections. How someone can be described as a despot and a tyrant when he won four presidential elections with thumping majorities and after 14 years in power, won the biggest vote that he'd ever had. And I was there with my wife for two weeks. And the mass of the Venezuelan people are in mourning. Of course, the gold-toothed emigres who were dancing in the streets of Miami last night that the Republican congressman speaks for, they can dance on the lion's grave, but they can never be a lion. Well, uh, co Congressman, I mean, it is true, of course, that he did win democratic elections, and indeed, you know, no less an individual than President Jimmy Carter witnessed one of them and certainly said it was a free and fair election. Uh, and that is a problem, isn't it? Because he, Venezuela is a very divided country, and like many other countries in, in Latin America, and even in perhaps many states in the United States, have rich and poor, and Chavez sided with the poor. Yeah, you know, we have to recognize that while there were elections there, and I'm not suggesting they were fixed, you have a tie between government and government control of these elections that is not like an election, what most of us would consider in the, the West. When you take from one and give to another, the recipient of that theft uh, may appreciate it, but those who were stolen from don't. Uh, Margaret Thatcher famously said the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. Because of the oil wells in Venezuela, Hugo was able, or Mr. Chavez was able to survive longer than socialism might elsewhere. But the reality is, is that what he leaves is, for this nation is a nation whose economy is in shambles. It's had spiking debt, a 20 percent level of inflation, and he left his country worse off than he found it. Well, before I go back to George Garay, let me ask you one question, which really is very poignant in this moment. One of the things which has changed in the last 14 years is that America itself has interfered much less in Latin America than ever in, in recent history. And that is surely a good thing and may in part be down to the very independent line that uh, Hugo Chavez pursued. Indeed, and he pursued Latin American unity. He introduced uh, Bank of the South, uh, University of the South, even Telesur, a television of the South. He was keen and working on various projects like the ALBA uh, grouping, for example, to unite the peoples of Latin America so that they would never again be victims of the hegemony of the United States. And what the congressman calls theft, other people call taxation of rich people so that their wealth can be redistributed amongst people who don't have enough to eat. Well, 94% of let me, Venezuelans let me now just, eat three times a day. Let me pause you there, uh, George Gallagher, because I just wanted to get this point with the congressman, which is ju just the question of America basically allowing Latin America to go its way. And what a way it is. I mean, Venezuela may be, to some extent, slightly behind, but the fact is the continent is romping forwards, and, and that is an interesting development. 
That's true, and, and those that, that have democratic governments and capitalist economies are doing much better than the socialist regime in Venezuela. I, I do, uh, I would associate myself, though, with President Obama's broad comments that now is a new day in Venezuela, and the Venezuelan people have the opportunity to choose new leadership. Let's hope they choose wisely, and, uh, and America looks forward to the opportunity to interact with uh, the citizens of that great nation. Well, but George Galloway, that is the next issue, isn't it? 30 days to choose a new president. Obviously, the vice president will be a candidate, but he's, for whatever one may say, not Hugo Chavez, and it will be very, very hard to match what went before. Well, no one else is Hugo Chavez. There's not two Hugo Chavez's in the world, never mind in Venezuela. But Nicolas Maduro, I knew him when he was a bus driver, when he was a bus driver's trade union leader. And I look forward to, if I can, helping him get elected as the president of the republic. He's a man with the common touch. He used to drive the common people in buses, not something the congressman uh, can uh, claim to do, nor the people that he represents. I believe that Maduro will win a thumping majority in 40 days' time. I think the people of Venezuela are not ready to abandon their revolution. They've seen the future, and it works. But it is true, Congressman, as, as indeed you said, that the, the economy is not uh, in, in the best of shape. Whatever redistribution has taken place, the fact is there is inflation, a pretty romping inflation. Uh, I mean, how do you look forward in, in such a short period to really very much happening? Well, if, yeah, I mean, if Venezuela is the shining star of socialism, it doesn't say much for socialism, does it? Um, our hope is, is that the people of of this nation understand the opportunities that would come with democracy, understand the opportunities that would come with a capitalist society that could help grow their economy and create wealth for broad cross sections, not just redistribute wealth from some and, and, and give it to others. Clearly in this new dawn, there is the opportunity for that. That's certainly what I'm hoping for. I think America stands ready to help if, if, if that's the choice. George Galloway, it, it, it is perfectly possible that in the medium term there will be change of some kind. I mean, it's interesting that already uh, the stock markets in what you would regard as the capitalist world uh, have reacted to what's happened in Venezuela by investing in American oil companies that may well very much hope to be back on the ground in Venezuela. Yeah, uh, uh, despite the congressman's efforts to paint uh, Venezuela as a kind of Bolshevik, uh, uh, a hive of Bolshevik uh, stroke anarchy, uh, the reality is that tax in Britain is higher than it is in Venezuela on rich people. Most of the enterprises in Venezuela are still in private hands. Most of the television stations are still in private hands and against Chavez and against the revolution. So this is not a red in tooth and claw revolution. Uh, this is a labor revolution. Chavez right. stood for the kind of things that labor used to stand for. Most people in Britain and most people in the world think that would be quite a good thing. Thanks very much. George Galloway in Beirut and, and indeed uh, Congressman Messer in Washington. Thank you both very much. It's rare that one gets both sides of that dichotomy which confronts the people of Venezuela so articulately put. Thank you both very much.